Next match, Daniel Bryan versus Charlie Sheen. Wait a minute. I'm just talking about what they wanted. Daniel Bryan versus Kane. Uh, Thank God he faced a wrestler. Yeah, it is better than what the Charlie Sheen thing would have been. So, if anything, that's the good thing. But this was not a SummerSlam match in my mind at all. This was a three-hour Raw match, if that. Waste of a match. Uninteresting. I didn't care about it. It was... Uh, about as good as I kind of expected it to be, which in some way is a compliment, and in some ways it isn't. Um, I would have rather had them do a lot of other things. I don't really know what necessarily at the top of my head, because uh, it kind of all depends on what their plans are for the other uh, people on the card, but I don't like Daniel Bryan and Kane working well together. I think that they've had enough matches, and they should move on. Uh, It was a lot better than my expectations, actually. It exceeded mine. I I thought it was a good way to keep the momentum of the show going, honestly. Um, You know, Kane, I I, I guess I can say he's pretty limited, but Brian kind of picked up the pace and made the match flow flow better than I thought it would. But yeah, it's been done on TV like 3,000 times this year, and that kind of takes away from the fact that, ooh, it's a pay-per-view match, but we've seen it on Raw and SmackDown 3,000 times in the build-up to the show. So, yeah, I, I enjoyed the action. Like I like Brian getting a pay-per-view victory for the first time since Elimination Chamber. That was enjoyable, and Kane throwing a tantrum is funny to watch. So, <laughs> yeah, I thought it kept the momentum of the show going well, but it's, it's a feud that's a little redundant. I read or had Kane won because I'm a Kane fan, and... He hasn't had that many victories in pay-per-views at all. Hmm. In fact, they've been jobbing him like left and right, it seems like. Well, he did beat Orton at WrestleMania. Well, that was like his, he beat Orton, and then he went back to jobbing to people again. And then Very Orton true. went back to uh, suspension. <laughs> <laughs> the, and, the, 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 res, the, the, the vacation, remember, it was yeah. a two-month vacation. And I actually thought they would play more into the whole Kane AJ thing. I mean, that whole thing where she was like smiling at him that one SmackDown, and hmm. I was like, why don't they play into this story more instead of just going to generic match hmm. instead of the anger management angle that they've been doing? Yeah. Well, I oh, thought the God. most interesting part of the whole match was that Kane's shoe got untied. And the whole match, we're sitting there watching, and we're going, "Oh, when's he going to trip? When's he going to trip?" <laughs> like, I didn't even notice. Yeah, I might have to that? go back and watch that just to see his shoe get untied. That might even make it even more entertaining. Uh, the whole, pretty much the whole match, from what I can remember, he's got one boot. It's untied, and it's even still untied when they go backstage. And we're like, "It's going to get caught on something backstage." And we were just waiting for it to happen, but. I mean, of course, we wouldn't have wanted him to, like, fall and hurt himself or anything like that. And, of course, Josh Matthews needs to be beat up by everybody, right? (laughs) Again, he's like, it's like when... uh, He's just the announcing whipping boy. Yeah, it's like when Cody Rhodes first came into WWE and everybody just kept slapping him in the face. Like, now they're on this, like, kick where they're just like, hey, why don't you just throw Josh Matthews everywhere? (laughs) Just, hey, Josh, it's good. Where is he? Uh, He left. Rod just tosses him. Who right. cares? Josh Matthews just gets thrown. Oh, Kane's angry. He throws Matthews. Oh, well. He'll be better. Whenever Matt uh, Morgan comes back to WWE, the first thing yeah, he's going to do is, yeah, yeah, where's yeah, Josh yeah. Matthews? <laughs> yeah, I need I to think it's funny on. that Kane wears the Predator mask. Nobody's ever known that basically a Predator mask he wears out to the ring. I keep calling him Super Shredder and uh, Casey Jones. <laughs> <laughs> I want to see him wear the... the the rest of the high, the cricket outfit and all that kind of stuff from the first uh, Ninja Turtles. Just oh, have to fight with somebody in a trench like coat. Like half-assed attempt at old Iron Man mask. Uh, <laughs> I still don't understand it. Like, it's a mask that's concealing <laughs> another mask, and I don't get the point of it. Just stop wearing that fucking thing. The, the odd times when he comes out and that, that metal piece of shit isn't on his face, I'm like, oh, this is refreshing. Who could ever forget, like, WrestleMania in broad daylight no, he can't have his really dark uh, entrance because, like, they're in an outside stadium and there's Kane in broad daylight with this ridiculous looking mask trying to look all dark and mysterious and, like, the sunlight's just shining all over him. It's like a welder's and, mask. <laughs> yeah, it's I like. Think it's funny you're, going you're, not going to a, you're not going to a mechanic shop, Kane. <laughs> Fuck, take that fucking thing off. Kane in the middle. 
the middle of one of his matches, he just does the arm movement. You get the pyro on the poles, and he just starts like putting stuff up there and trying to like hammer out something. <laughs> to fix uh, father's helmet, I have to wear it. <laughs> uh, whatever. But helmet I- Hassan. Whatever happened to embrace the hate? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Cena, Cena's too powerful, even though he gets booed. He embraces too much. He doesn't embrace any hate. He just listens to the few, the, the small amount of love he gets. Love no, is... I thought he would be like going out to everybody else going, embrace the hate. I uh, actually kind of liked the angle of embrace the hate. I just hated everything they did with it. <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah, the beginning was great until they made it Friday the 13th with Zack Ryder, Eve, and John Cena. Let's... Then it became undeniably the worst angle all year next to Natalia farting. Uh, okay. <laughs> right now, speaking of that, right now, the way that I keep adding notes to the best and worst of the year awards, I've got Natalia farting as the worst gimmick of the year, and I've got... Uh, I think I have actually the Zack Ryder and Kane feud and everything. Yeah, yeah. Friday the 13th starring Cena, Kane, <laughs> Ryder, and Eve. That's what I'm calling it. Awful. And, and a crash pad next to a truck. Uh, <laughs> right now, I think Ryder I have versus that. crash pad. <laughs> I think I have I that. I don't know if you guys person. ever saw in TNA, but Abyss was wearing like a Michael Myers outfit a couple years back. Oh God! I can see he's playing his own brother now. That's that's interesting. I'm surprised they got that right. They didn't have a best wear like uh, I don't know some other kind of a mask like a Nixon mask or something like that. And we're like, oh fuck, we got well, our. No, mask. he was wearing a best mask, but he was wearing the the Michael Myers jacket from the movie, the Rob Zombie movie, and the hood and everything. Oh, I haven't seen that one yet. I only saw yeah. the old ones. He's, he's playing his own brother Joseph right now. If anybody he's knew that. that. Yeah, he's, he's like a lawyer now. <laughs> Oh, yeah, it's God. weird. And people wonder it's why I don't watch TNA. It's actually uh, getting better. I mean, if I start to watch it, I mean, maybe you all. I never thought I'd be watching it again. And I'm they, right when I think I'm out, they pull me right back in. So, <laughs> all right, wow. that's that's it then for the Daniel Bryan talk. And we're gonna go from uh, horror movies to superhero movies in the next round with the uh, next round, the next part with um, the Miz and Rey Mysterio with the Intercontinental Championship. <laughs> 